Hi everyone, it's Mike again and welcome to my top five tips and techniques and or tricks using Photoshop CS4. This one is all about not what everyone thinks is the favorite tips uh, using layers in Photoshop, but what I personally find the most useful when I'm using Photoshop CS4 in my day-to-day -day kind of Photoshopery. So hopefully you haven't seen all of these, you may have seen one or two of them before, but I'm almost positive that you will learn something about Photoshop layers when you look at this tutorial. Welcome again to Creative Suite TV. Let's get straight into it with tip number one. First of all, it's all going to be about layers. So this first document that we have open has got plenty of layers in it and we're going to have a good look at, at the layers there. As you can see, I've been a terrific, um, terrific user of layers here, haven't bothered to name any of them. So the first tip that I've got for you about layers is how do you select the layers? Well, of course you can go ahead and turn the eyeball on and off just to find what layers what. I like to work this way. If I need to select a certain component of this wonderful uh, logo that I'm working on here, you come up to the top left and make sure you have selected on Auto Layer Select. So you tick on Auto Layer Select and then whatever we click on, let's say the TSP, the Tech Solutions logo, it automatically then selects over in the Layers panel. So watch again as I click on this Shiner, the little Shiner in the corner, then Layer 2 becomes um, active and then I can move around all of those objects then select the text and then of course the text selects and that's a vector smart object that's actually got some effects on it um, brought over from Illustrator but that's tip number one is the auto layer select and I think it's it's possibly well not a not a bad one hey what do you think about that hopefully hopefully you like it tip number two involves um, a single image here, which is just a, a photograph, a macro photograph of a flower. And you can see in the layers panel, there is just one layer. So the next tip is how do you duplicate a layer? And this is my, this is my most commonly used one. Um, there's a couple of ways of doing this. I'll shorten this up so you can see. The first way that I like to do it is get any layer drag and drop it onto the new thing icon and that will duplicate it. Then we get background copy. So that one again, just pick any layer up, drag and drop it on the new page icon there at the bottom and incidentally that goes in Illustrator and in InDesign as well. So that's a great uh, little tip. The other way of duplicating the layer is Apple or Control J for duplicate. That's the Australian shortcut J for duplicate. Doesn't really work. Um, in countries where you actually pronounce it with a D. So there you go, duplicate the layer. Very, very uh, easy to do. So when we're working on something like this, you know, we might want to apply a filter like, oh, I don't know, we'll do a sharpen, right? So we'll do an unsharp mask and we sharpen this layer up. Wow, that's, that's quite sharp. Uh, I don't think the radius needs to be so much. We can drag that up. So let's say we're sharpening this up. We've probably done it more than we should, but that's fine. We only want to apply this sharpness to part of the image. So this is our next tip, which is a reverse layer mask. So a layer mask we, we create by clicking on this button here, and it creates a white layer that you can paint onto hide parts of a layer. A reverse layer mask is where we hold down the Alt or the Option key and click it, and it creates a completely black layer so that it hides the effect of everything on that layer. And so what that means is if we come over here and get a white paintbrush, a nice big paintbrush, not a silly uh, brush like the one that I have selected here. Um, let me just uh, reset my brushes there. So we've got sensible brushes, right? So I get a brush and now I can paint with white on this layer and it will reveal 
zoom in so you can see, it will reveal that sharpening just where I want it to be so that we can paint it in and we get more or less a, you know, a very nicely sharpened up area rather than doing the entire photograph. And I think that certainly adds to this entire thing, doesn't it? Now, that was duplicating the layer, that was adding a layer mask. The next one that we've got, the next little tip, is how do you duplicate multiple layers onto a new layer? So let's say we wanted to take both of these layers, duplicate them, like copy them, merge them together and put them on a new layer together. This is my favorite shortcut for trying things out. This is Apple Option Shift E on the keyboard, E for egg. So Control Alt Shift E is a merge visible copy layer and you can see there it is. So if we turn the back two layers off, the one that's left at the top is a copy of all of them. And that's great because then you can try things out. You can try filters out, uh, turn it into a smart object, do all sorts of things to it, knowing that you've got the original layers underneath. An uh, extremely useful tip. I would highly recommend you remember that one. Apple Option Shift or Control Alt Shift and the letter E on your keyboard. That gets that one done for you and then everyone's happy. Okay, so that was tip number four. The last one that I've got for you is a blending one. So here's a photograph I took out near my home um, in Victoria here in Australia. And we want to blend this moon, which is also a photograph I took in Victoria, into the background. So this time we double click the layer, not on the text, because that's how you rename the text, but over to the side here, double click it, and brings up this wonderful panel. Okay, this is, and I call it a wonderful panel. It's for doing drop shadows and all of that sort of stuff, but it also has these blend if sliders down here. These are great, this is the best part of layers. We can take, rather than just the overall opacity down of a layer, which is up here, we can take just the dark colors and change their opacity. We can even, by holding down the Alt key, split them in half so that we get a nice smooth blend between uh, transparent and opaque where the dark of the light colors in. And the real kicker is where we can take the underlying layers and then bring those dark pixels in front. And again, we can split that so that we can merge in two images like that and it look like they're one image. It's the blend if sliders and then you use the move tool up here and we can move that anywhere we like and you see it will go behind any dark colors and really become part of that scene. They're my top five tips, five tips for layers in Photoshop and I could play around with that all day. It's great for lightning bolts as well. There you go. Hopefully you learned at least one new tip out of all of that lot and we'll see you again real soon. Maybe we'll do other tips that aren't layers in Photoshop. If you think that's a good idea, you can send me a message and we'll, we'll do it. I'll listen to you guys. You're smart. Thank you.